Let's learn how to handle uh, the buffer and, and flushing the buffer. So I'm going to create a brand new file, new project, .NET Framework, and let's call this flush buffer. Now when you type keys at your keyboard, they're actually put into what they call a keyboard buffer. That's why if sometimes you ever press and hold down a key or a book is on it, and sometimes your computer will scream at you with a loud buzzing sound, ringing sound. Other otherwise, you just see a whole bunch of characters. And as you type things, sometimes we type fast. And those characters are put into a buffer. And then the computer keeps pulling one character out of that buffer and trying to process it. I'm going to go ahead and come over here. And I'm going to declare a variable. And for this variable, what I want to do is I want to declare a char variable, and I'll call it C answer. And then I want to go ahead and prompt the user. Do you want to enter data? And I'll put a question mark. And then I want to go and get that answer from the keyboard. Now to get that answer from the keyboard, I can say console dot read but if you notice there's still an error there because it's saying you know you want to read a character from the keyboard but you're reading that as an int rather than a char because that's what read does it returns it as an int so I need to go ahead and do something called casting so I say parenthesis char parenthesis console dot read this says get the data from the keyboard as an int so if I press capital A a 65 is returned, but then I say take that 65 and turn it back into a character, which is capital A, and store it to there. Now I want to go ahead and um, let's just go ahead and, and do a read line. Let's create a variable string, we'll call it s name, and I'll say s name will be equal to the console dot read line which says go to the keyboard and get a string and before that let's prompt the user to say uh, enter your name and let's see what happens and I'm going to have one more console read line just to pause the screen and we'll run it do you want to enter data? I'll press the letter Y, enter. Now it says enter your name, and it looks like we're waiting for data, right? So I could type in Greg and press enter. I'm going to come back over to here, and let's do a console.write line, and let's write out S name. Let's try it one more time. Do you want to enter data? Yes. Enter your name, Greg. Nothing prints out. That's really interesting, isn't it? Let's do one more. Let's have another one. We'll say string um, s nickname. So we have another variable. We'll copy this right here. And so we're going to do a prompt. Do you want to enter your data? We're going to go read a character from the keyboard. And then we're going to do a read line. What is your name? And another read line or what is your nickname and then we'll pause let's see what happens do you want to enter your data yes enter your name enter your name we probably should change that other prompt but the point being did you notice that it jumped over this input try it one more time do you want to enter data yes enter your name enter your nickname and so what happened is that when you press the letter Y, enter key. The Y and the enter key go into the keyboard buffer. In other words, a place on the computer that holds keys. The read statement extracts the Y key from the buffer. So what's still left in the buffer? The enter key. And so then, you drop to here and you display enter your name and the read line says hey buffer do you have anything in it and the buffer says yeah I still got an enter key and so it takes that enter key and sticks it into s name 
And then it says, well, keep going. Read line, do you have anything? No, I don't. Because the difference between read line and read is that the read extracts one character only and leaves everything else. Whereas the read line says extract all of the characters and throw the enter key. It would help if I type that correctly. Throw the enter key away. So it's not out there in the buffer anymore. The read leaves the enter key. The read line throws it away. And that's why when we say, do you want to enter your data? Y, and we press the enter key. Read grabs the Y, leaves the enter key in the buffer. And so read line says, hey, I've already got data in the buffer. I don't need to wait for you. I'll just take whatever is there, which is the enter key. Let's try doing it one more time. And instead of putting Y, let's add space Greg space Anderson enter. Now it's still jumped over there and it's waiting for my nickname, right? Let's see what would happen if we actually displayed what was in S name. So let's come down to this read line. And I'm going to go ahead and console.write line s name and see if there's anything in it before I prompt for the nickname. Try it one more time. Y space Greg Anderson enter. Notice what was in the buffer? Space Greg space Anderson. So the way the read works is it grabs one character, leaves everything else, meaning we could have a buffer problem. The way the read line works is it says grab all the characters and flush the buffer. So how do we actually handle a situation like this where we're reading one character and if there's anything else we just want to throw it away? All you have to do is say console.readline parenthesis parenthesis and notice we're not saving it to anything. We just say console.readline. That will say take everything that's in the buffer, throw it away and then we can continue on. Let's see what happens now if we run it. Y space Greg space Anderson enter Greg Gregory and that seems to work. So it flushes the buffer, resets the input, and allows you to type in whatever you need to type in. So if you ever notice in your program your inputs are being jumped over, that's because you're having a buffer problem. This line right here flushes the buffer and removes that error you might have.